Hey, it's Nick, and today I want to present a CMS application that I coded in Java, and I'm using um, SQLite in the back end and built a user interface with Window Builder using Swing Components. Now, the user interface isn't going to knock anybody out visually. Um, it's just a, a very basic interface for right now, and um, really I just want to show you the, the functionality of this basic CMS application. And maybe in the future I'll, I'll go back and redesign the user interface with um, Scene Builder and JavaFX, but um, for now uh, this is just a, a basic user interface for the CMS application. So let's run this article GUI which is the um, sort of the entrance into this application. And what this is going to allow the user to do is create, view, edit, and delete articles. And this has been built for a single user. Um, you can see we don't have any um, logging in or signing up functionality right now. Um, that may be something that we add later. But for now, let's say that the user is going to click the create button and they want to create a new article for the content management system. So I'm not going to put too much in here. And they're going to click add and that's going to add it to our database. You can see down here that we've connected to our database and it says that our article has been saved. So let's close this and go look at our articles. Now we should see that 4 one as the second article because there, there should be two in here now. Yeah, this article I created before and this is the one that we just created. Article number two. So this is just a J text area that we're using to display all of the articles. And it's scrollable and they just click show and that'll query the database to output all of the articles in the database. So let's say they want to they made a mistake and they made to they meant to make this say 2 to coincide with article number 2. So let's say they click the edit delete dialog and that's going to bring up this little dialog that's going to let them edit and delete the articles in the database. And the articles are referenced by number. So we're going to go to number 2 and click edit and again that's going to query our database and display that article in this text box so we'll let the user go in here and make an edit and to click update to update the article in the database so you can see we connected to the database again and our article has been updated so let's refresh this and now we see that it changed from four to two so now we've, we've edited that article it's been saved in our database and now we can we can see that our edit has been saved and it's being displayed here. Now we also have the delete func functionality in here so let's say that they just want to delete this article number two. So I'll click delete again connected to our database and we'll go behind the scenes here and look at how the database is doing this in just a second but Right now we're just getting a pop-up that's saying that that article's been deleted and you can see that we can no longer select article number two because this combo box is being populated with a query um, to show all of the article numbers in the database and two is not there anymore. There's only one article now in the database. So when we refresh this we just should see that article two is gone and article one is the only one in there now. And that is the case. So let's close that and now let's go behind the scenes a little bit. Um, these first couple classes are just the the GUIs that we've we've already seen. The view GUI and the edit GUI. And this is an important class here, the article class. This is in our business layer, and this is the class that's going to do all of the interaction between 
the front end and the data layer. So let's look at um, some of the functions in here. We've got add to database, which calls our article storage class in the data layer to add an article to the database. We've got the show articles from the database, which is used to populate the view GUI. We've got the populate edit GUI combo box. I talked about this. This is um, going to run a query to find all the article numbers in the database and populate the combo box with that so that a user can select one of those and view the contents of that article so they can edit it in the edit, edit GUI. And find article contents by article number. This is another part of that, um, that edit GUI so that when a user selects a certain article number they can display those results. We've got the update article to database and delete article in database. And again, um, we're using the article class as our in the business layer, so it's the intermediary between the front end and data layer. And and these two, it's it's just calling a, it's just calling a static method in the article storage class to do the work. And here's our article storage class. This is where all the interesting things happen in the database. This is uh, this is our work her workhorse for all the database interactions. And we've got a number of methods in here. We've got initializing our database. You can see we're connecting to an SQLite database called Article App. And you can see that's in our project here. And you can see um, I have uh, some sort of version control going on here. I just, I've recently I've been using Subversion and CloudForge a lot for version control. And in the past I've used GitHub um, a little bit for um, for Ruby on Rails and some Ruby, basic Ruby projects that I did, but I haven't really used it in a while. I've never used it uh, GitHub in side of Eclipse until this project, and um, I'm glad I started using it. It's really easy to use from within Eclipse. Within Eclipse, um, I'll show you a little bit of that functionality in just a second. Um, we'll have to make a change so we can commit it. So let's um, just finish looking at this article storage class real quick. Um, the add article to database method adds an article to the SQLite database. Um, it's really just all of our, our CRUD functionality. And then um, I've got uh, java.comments on all the classes and all the variables and methods. So this is our the index of the Java docs. If we wanted to go in and get a high level overview of what all of our classes and methods and stuff do, we could use this. So let's make a, a quick change to say the article class. Um, we'll comment the two string method. Okay, and we'll save that. And now this isn't something, this is a really small edit. It's not something we would usually commit to the repository, but just uh, to demonstrate how Eclipse works with GitHub. We'll do this real quick. We'll do a commit. And you can see a couple of things have changed. I've changed, I changed the database because we deleted that. Um, we created and deleted that uh, article number two. And then you can see the article that we just edited that Java doc. So we'll say that we updated the database and added Java doc comments in the article class. And we'll commit and push. Um, Git is set up as a local repository on my machine. So if I just commit, this will commit it to my local repository. If I do commit and push, that'll commit it to both my local repository and my, re my network repository, which we'll look at in just a second. 
So we'll commit and push and we'll say yes. And then what's cool is we can go look at our commits. This is the GitHub website. And you can see before we had 11 commits, we, I just did that new commit, um, updated the database, added java.comments. And when we look at our commits, we can see the things that have changed. So this line in green right here is what we changed in the article class. So that concludes the uh, presentation of my Java CMS application. Thanks for watching.